Testing one, two, testing one, two. Good morning, everyone. All right, I know we were settling down, so we'll try that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, that was a little better, but this is Buck O'Neill, y'all. I know you got more juice than that. Good morning. Good morning. Now, that's what I'm talking about. You can't come into the house that Buck built and, and, and be all low-key, and I know we all, we got these executives and all these important people. You know Buck didn't care anything about that. He was one amongst the people, and I am so overjoyed to see all of you all here with us this morning on this very auspicious occasion. If you can't tell, I'm still basking in the glow of Buck O'Neill's long overdue, long awaited induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. <laughs> Good morning again. On behalf of our team here at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, of course, I'm Bob Kendrick. I'm the president here for the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. I want to thank members of our board of directors, and several of them are here. Kevin Battle, who is the board chair, and other board members, if you aren't standing, would you please stand and be acknowledged by the gathering here today. Adam Sachs, Kevin Battle, I don't know if I missed someone else, uh, but we really appreciate that. I would be remiss if I didn't particularly thank Adam, who wear, wears two hats. He's a member of the Negro League Baseball Museum's board of directors, He's a vice chairman of the board, but he's also an executive with the Kansas City Royals. And I want to thank the Kansas City Royals organization, and in particular, John Sherman, who hosted us this past weekend in Cooperstown, and what a tremendous celebration it was, and to see a major league owner sitting out there, and let me tell y'all, it was hot in Cooperstown. <laughs> And we all sat out there together, major league owner, sitting amongst us on Saturday prior to the induction. We had an amazing brunch that John co-hosted along with me and Bob Costas and Joe Posnanski and Lee Smith. And it was tremendous. And so this celebration has been made even more special through the partnership that we have with our friends over at the Kansas City Royals. And before it slips my mind, Buck O'Neill's Hall of Fame plaque will be on display here next month on August 12th. It will leave Cooperstown and come home on August 12th as part of our salute to the Negro Leagues weekend with the Kansas City Royals. And of course, the Royals will be wearing the 1945 Kansas City Monarch home uniforms. That happens to be the uniform that Jackie Roosevelt Robinson wore as a member of the Monarchs. And the Brooklyn Dodgers, or the Brooklyn Dodgers, the Los Angeles Dodgers <laughs> will be wearing the Brooklyn Dodgers uniform of 1947. And so it is going to be Jackie versus Jackie. And of course, Jackie can't lose. But I'm leaning for the 1945 team to win. Uh, and, but it gives us an opportunity to celebrate his connection to our great story as well. And so make plans to stop by here on Saturday, August 12th. The plaque will be here all day for us to get an opportunity, Friday, I'm sorry, Friday, August 12th, so that all of us can get a chance to see the plaque. And when I stepped into the plaque room after the installation, it absolutely gave me chills. And, and I was one of the first to be able to actually stand there near Buck's Hall of Fame plaque. And, and it was perhaps the most special moment of an entire weekend of special moments. So anyway, I want to get this started. And if you will indulge us for just a quick second and take a look at this video. This was supposed to run during the Hall of Fame celebration, but there was threatening weather coming in and they had to cut a lot of the videos. And so this was cut. But we want you to take a look at what we had put together as we remember Buck O'Neill with, with a little help from our friends over at the MLB Network. So please, take a look. The charm, the charisma, the gentle spirit. Whoever had the opportunity to meet Buck O'Neill 
good to be around you, man. Hey, you still feel good. No, I just know when to flex, so you can touch when I flex. <laughs> the lives were likely changed from a chance encounter with this great ambassador. I develop passionate love for this man. I think he's one of the most amazing human beings to ever walk the face of this earth who just happened to be a great baseball player. Buck O'Neill was a tremendous first baseman for the legendary Kansas City Monarchs. He became a great leader of men, which is why he became such a successful manager, player manager with the Monarchs. After his Monarchs playing career ended, Buck O'Neill would move into Major League Baseball as a scout. He is credited with having signed Ernie Banks to become the Cubs' first black player. They also signed Lou Brock with the Chicago Cubs. Lee Arthur Smith to his first professional contract with the Cubs. So Buck has three Hall of Famers that he signed. And while he didn't sign Hall of Famer Billy Williams, he is credited for having kept Mr. Williams in the game because Billy Williams had quit the Cubs and gone home. And who did the Cubs send to go get him? Buck O'Neill. And Mr. Williams will be the first to tell you that he owes his Hall of Fame career to one Buck O'Neill. And then Buck would then become the first African-American coach in Major League Baseball history, 1962, with the Chicago Cubs. You can feel his spirit when you come here to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. There would not be a Negro Leagues Baseball Museum if it was not for the tireless leadership of Buck O'Neill. <laughs> I affectionately call the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum the house that Buck built. Back in 2006, when we were waiting on the announcement to see if Buck was going to be one of that group of Negro League players who were being voted on who would be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He missed by one vote. I was just devastated. Who handled it better than everyone? Buck O'Neill. Buck O'Neill would push aside his disappointment, go to Cooperstown, deliver this impassioned speech on behalf of 17 others who had gotten in, but all of them were dead. And who became their voice? Negro League Baseball. All you needed was a bus, yeah, and a couple of sets of uniform. You could have 20 of the best athletes that ever lived. And that's who we are representing here today. And I say that it was one of the most selfless acts in American sports history. Whoever's next to you, hold a hand. Come on, you Hall of Famers. Hold hand. All you people out there, hold hand. I want you to sing after me. The greatest thing in all of my life is loving you. A little over two months later. The greatest thing, my friend, in all of my life passed away himself. Is loving you. As he would call Cooperstown the valley. You just kind of got an idea that the valley will be lit up with the spirit of Buck O'Neill when he does finally receive the official induction into a place that he loved, the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Let me tell y'all, the valley was indeed lit up on Sunday. Uh, a few other folks that I want to acknowledge to our friend, the mayor of Blue Springs, Missouri, Mr. Carson Ross. Mayor, thank you so much for being here. Tom Salisbury, out of Senator Blunt's office. Dominic Bell, out of Congressman Cleaver's office. And I would also be tremendously rem remiss if I didn't recognize my friend Randall Ferguson, because as I talk about the house that Buck built, he went out and raised the money so Buck could build a house. And, and he was our 
<laughs> and so we appreciate you guys being here. Today is really special because what Buck wanted us to do in 2006, had he gotten in, was to use that platform, that national platform, to help raise money and awareness for his museum. And it is vitally important that we fulfill what Buck had wanted us to do, albeit 16 years later. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew that the door would open and create an opportunity two years after a pandemic essentially robbed us of our 100th anniversary celebration, a celebration that we had put so much energy into planning, and it was going to be the jumpstart of a, not only a year-long celebration, but a major fundraising opportunity for this museum. The pandemic curtailed those efforts, although we were able to salvage some aspects of that pandemic, we were, we were we, as I was like to say, we dug deep and grabbed hold to the spirit, the resilient spirit of the Negro Leagues to pull ourselves through that. But it's almost fateful, maybe a little bit poetic, that two years later, an opportunity emerges out of seemingly nowhere that ultimately sends Buck O'Neill into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And as I mentioned to several members of the media while we're in Cooperstown, number 22 goes in the Hall of Fame in 2022. <laughs> and it's at a time that we are set to embark on the next phase of growth for this organization. Buck O'Neill's brilliantly biography was aptly entitled, I Was Right On Time. And just maybe it wasn't supposed to happen in 2006. That it was indeed supposed to happen in 2022 so that the man that built this great museum will also be leading the effort to help this institution continue to grow. So today, we launch officially our Thanks a Million Buck campaign. And the spirit of this campaign is built around the fact that we do owe so much to Buck O'Neill. Thanks a million for the humility. Thanks a million for the gentleness and the kindness that he displayed just all the time. Thanks a million for the smiles and the laughters and the songs. Thanks a million for teaching us about the heroes of the Negro Leagues. Thanks a million for never believing in the goodness of people. He saw the good in people sometimes, y'all, even when they weren't good. And, and so we do owe a great deed of gratitude to Buck O'Neill, who Ali Gates says, Mayor, that he, Buck O'Neill and H. Rowe Bottle, two most important Kansas Citians ever. Uh-huh. And so we do owe a great deed of thanks to Buck. And the best way to thank Buck, and this is the challenge that we are issuing, it's a grassroots campaign, and we'll lead into a larger fundraising effort at our November 12th gala, the Thanks a Million Buck gala, that will be held at the Midland Theater on Saturday, November the 12th. But this first effort is to rally Buck O'Neill fans around the world to consider donating one buck, at least one buck, to Buck. And when we say every buck counts, <laughs> we mean it. But this is an opportunity where everyone can feel a part of this effort. And so we're issuing the challenge for one million people here in this great city of ours and across the baseball universe to consider donating at least one dollar in support of Buck O'Neill's museum and the completion of the Buck O'Neill Education and Research Center at the site of the Paseo YMCA right around the corner from where we are right now that is the birthplace of the Negro Leagues and as many of you know we had severe damage to that building in 2018. We've now recovered from that. We've got a construction crew in there fixing those areas that were damaged. We hope by the gala in November that we'll actually be able to host an event in that space. But we want to complete this space by next November. It is ambitious, but we feel like we can do it because we're driven by the spirit of Buck. 
and the support of all of you who I know will join this effort. We want you all to be at least one in a million, celebrating someone who was indeed one in a million. And so to support the campaign, all you have to do is visit thanksamillionbuck.com and make a contribution of at least a dollar. We're encouraging every youth baseball team around this country to join us in this effort because that's the beauty of a grassroots campaign. Virtually anyone can feel ownership in this effort. And this campaign got officially kicked off with our friends over at hy V when we announced the Thanks a Million Bucks celebration. And you've seen all the stuff. I hope you all take a picture with the backdrop over there and tip your cap to Buck, and you'll hear more from hy V as we move through the program. But that is the genesis of this campaign, and we're going to need help from everyone. While we want you to contribute, we also want you to spread the word, because in order for us to reach a million plus people with this message, it's going to take all of us collectively spreading the word about this effort. We will run this campaign beginning today. The landing page is up and ready and we will run it through Buck O'Neill's 111th birthday on November the 13th. And I certainly hope by the time we get to November the 13th, we will have raised at least a million dollars or more to help make Buck's dream of this education and research center come true. I'm going to step aside because we've got some very special people who've got some great things that I know that they want to say about Buck O'Neill, and I'm going to start this with someone who is a great friend of mine and this museum. She is doing such a tremendous job, not only as leader of the Greater Kansas City Sports Commission, but also now leader of Visit KC. And y'all, if you didn't realize it, Kansas City is on fire right now. And I ain't just talking about the heat. No, no, no. I ain't just talking about the heat. We're talking about an NFL draft. And we're talking about a World Cup coming to Kansas City. And it's really due to the tireless leadership of this wonderful woman. Her name is Kathy Nelson. Please welcome her. Thank you. You're so, so kind. It really just seems like yesterday when Bob, Kiona, myself, and I know a lot of you were sitting in this room and we were anxiously waiting word to find out if Buck would finally, finally be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. I've had several of these anxious moments in my career, most recently with the NFL World Cup host city announcement. And I can tell you it doesn't get any easier to find out if you've been selected or not. Those in this room who knew Buck was more, more than worthy of the honor, and it was long, long overdue. The joy, excitement, and tears of happiness made it a special day, not just for the Negro Baseball Museum and for baseball fans, but for all of us in Kansas City. At the Sports Commission and at Visit KC, we talk a lot about legacy. Whenever we host a large-scale event, whether it's the Big 12 Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, the upcoming NFL Draft, and the soon-to-be 2026 FIFA World Cup, we want Kansas City to be left better than it was before. And no one understood legacy more than Buck O'Neill. As an athlete, as an advocate, and as a person, Buck personified so many of the qualities we consider fundamental to our Kansas City culture. His spirit lives on, not just here in the Negro Baseball League's museum, the Buck O'Neill legacy seat at Kauffman Stadium, and the Kansas City Monarchs baseball team, but really in the values that he lived by. The generosity spirit, unmatched kindness, and his enduring optimism that I know we all feel in our hearts. And now it is our duty as Kansas City and our Kansas City honor to continue to build upon his legacy 
the easiest way to make a difference today and in the days and weeks and months to come is to continue to support the Thanks a Million Buck campaign as Bob has mentioned. Donate a dollar or more to help fund the Buck O'Neill Education and Research Center at the Paseo YNCA. And on November 12th, I hope I can dress as well as my friend Bob when we will all have the opportunity to put on our stylish clothes for the Thanks a Million Buck Hall of Fame Gala at the Midland Theater. And I am so excited about that event. And finally, I do want to encourage our local companies and organizations to give their support. As the Sports Commission and Visit KC continue to drive local economic impact through sports events, sports tourism, and all of our conventions, this museum, this museum is a national attraction and a huge asset to everything we bring to our city. Its cultural and historical value really can never be understated. So Bob, thank you for allowing me to participate today. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being such a, oops, I'm gonna knock you over, knock you over, Casey, you are. Anyhow, thanks Bob for being a friend of Kansas City. And I have no doubt that this historic milestone is just one of many, many, many to come for the next few days, weeks, and months for the museum. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and Kathy, thanks for being here on December the 5th, trying to keep my nerves uh, on off of edge. And, and Kathy was here, and she was so generous to host a conversation. Everybody was trying to keep me calm as we were awaiting that announcement. And that was the most difficult thing, because knowing how these secret ballots work, secret ballots are never good. Yeah, they are never good. Uh, and so having endured that in 2006, we all knew how that ended. But this time, the verdict went our way, and it was a special, special day. And I was so thrilled that Kathy was part of that. Someone else who has been a tremendous part of this organization. As a matter of fact, he is the architect of 18th and Vine. He could not be with us here today. But I'm going to say Reverend Cleaver before I say you as Congressman Cleaver, because at Buck's public memorial service down at Municipal Auditorium, he said something that I thought was profound, and I've carried that with me ever since Buck passed away in 2006. And he said, as long as we remember Buck, he will never die. Please indulge us with a video. He wanted to be here, but he's in D.C. handling D.C. business from U.S. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver II. Hello, this is Emanuel Cleaver, and I apologize that I can't be there with you. But I do want you to know this. It was a hot summer day in July of 1995 when Buck O'Neill and Randall Ferguson, who served as the chair of the Negro Leagues at the time, visited me in City Hall. Buck with steely-eyed seriousness, said to me, Mayor, I'm getting up there in age, and I surely hope that you can get the museums built on 18th and Vine before I die. I cannot verbally express, I don't know the words, I don't have the vocabulary to tell you the pressure I felt when those words fell from the lips of Buck. Now, thank God, that we were able to get it done. Now, to me, no one in the world can stand taller than a person who can make you feel tall when you feel small. Buck O'Neill could do it. Buck O'Neill made an entire city feel good, even when he was down, even when he had been mistreated, even when he had been excluded from the Hall of Fame, when everyone on this planet knew that that was a place he belonged. Now, I don't know how heaven works. The Holy Writ doesn't give us a great deal of information about it. But just in case things can be transmitted to others, I would like for God to please let Buck know. Buck, we 
thank you for a million smiles. We want to thank you for the millions of times that you were positive in the face of misguided and heedless heathens. Thank you, Buck. Thank you a million. Now, now, Randall, I'm sure, I'm sure our friend Congressman Cleaver is still calculating interest on that dollar that we owe him that we were supposed to pay in rent for being in this space, and, and that was some 25 years ago. I know he's got a formula already in place for what he owes us, or uh, what we owe him, and I'm sure he's going to say, okay, out of that thanks a million buck, maybe they can finally pay that dollar that they owe us. Uh, and we just might if we're successful, but now we, we owe so much to Congressman Cleaver for the continued support he, and of course, Senator Blount, S Senator Tim Kaine were so instrumental in pushing the coin legislation across the finish line. And I want to remind you that those coins are still available for sale. Go to usmint.gov and make sure you buy your U.S. Mint commemorative coins honoring the Negro Leagues, the first ever to do so. And if we're able to do that and sell through those coins, we could raise a mint, some $6 million in surcharges that will come back to this museum. So please encourage your friends who have the means to go out and buy those coins over at usmint.gov. It is now my pleasure to again bring someone up to speak about Buck, who knew Buck intimately. He's certainly no stranger to this museum. He is the leader of Jackson County, eight-time Gold Glove winner, Kansas City Royal Hall of Famer, Mr. Frank White. Let me see. Still morning. Uh, so good morning, everyone. I really appreciate you guys all coming out to celebrate Buck. And uh, Buck to me was uh, very special because I got an opportunity to know him intimately. And, and it really started, uh, as Bob had just said, with a meeting we had in 1990 when we first started to discuss the museum here. And, and I just had that relationship with Buck even uh, before then as a player uh, when he was working with the Royals and through our minor leagues and he was always my checks and balance guy. You know, when I was playing, I played a lot of games, and, and Buck would be in the stands, and I would go to Buck, and I would say, Buck, you got your stopwatch today? And he said, yeah. I said, well, put it on me. Because I knew that whatever I had to give that day, it was going to be 100% because, Bob had, uh, because Buck had to watch on me. So that was, that was, that was great. And, and every time I had a chance to include Buck in anything I was doing, I really made it a, uh, an effort to do that, uh, whether it be introducing me at, a, at an awards ceremony or – it, uh, speaking at my statue dedication, or uh, he was in my wedding. I mean, it was just a lot of things that, uh, that we share uh, in common, because Buck always saw the glass half full. And I think if most of us see the glass half full, it will be a lot better. He always says it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. And so it was great to, it was great to be able to uh, have those conversations uh, with, him, with Buck, because anytime you went to Buck, Buck would always give you the optimistic answer. And, and when I was playing, I used one guy all the time. I said, regardless of what I ask you, whatever I ask you, I want you to give me an honest answer. Don't do it. And never tell me what you think I want to hear. Tell me what the honest answer is. And that's the only way that I could get better. And Buck was the same way. And, and Buck's never going to tell you something that's going to make you feel good when he knows that it's not the right thing to say. And that's, that was the one thing I really um, uh, remember about Buck that really stays with me is the integrity, the character, and what he in, in, what the, the, just the energy puts onto you. So when you leave him, you feel like you've learned something and you feel much, much better about uh, yourself and the question that you put in front of him. But I also want to take a minute to uh, think back to that day, Bob, when, when we had that first meeting and, and the Negro League players that were there and we were discussing this museum. And, and, and I'm bringing it up just, I want to just think about all the years of of uh, collaboration uh, with the board and, and with the community. Uh, Randall, what a great job that you did when you came over as executive director. And, and just working with the different um, 
organizations throughout our community. Just because for a museum to survive and for a museum to even be established, you have to have a lot of donors. You have to have a lot of sponsors. You have a lot, a lot of people that believe what you believe, and they want they want to make this happen. And there's a countless hours that people put into this, uh, whether it be your executive director, uh, whether it be your staff, whether it be your volunteers. These folks have to believe in this museum in order to put in those type of hours. And I want to salute all of you today uh, for the years of service to get here and to be able to stand here and celebrate Buck going into the Hall of Fame. And I remember the night when we were waiting for uh, whether or not he was going to be selected. You couldn't hear a pin drop. And, and once he heard his name, then this whole place erupted. So it was just really nice to be a part of that. So I just want to just thank everyone who's had anything to do with this museum being here from, like I say, director, staff, volunteers, tourists, anyone who comes through to make this a success. I want to thank you all because it's a jewel in Kansas City, and it'll be a jewel in Kansas City for a long time. And as we continue to develop uh, with the Buck O'Neill Education Center and really just make this area uh, what Buck envisioned this area to be, uh, this, this is what Buck thought was heaven. You know, this, he thought he'd come to heaven when he came to 18th and Vine. And I think that when I was a kid, and I remember what 18th and Vine used to look like, I can't wait to get back to that, that same look myself. So thank you all again for coming. Um, I really believe that uh, you're here because you believe, and you believe in the mission, you believe in Buck. Uh, and I think that this, uh, thank you, Buck, I think, I think it's going to top more than a million. Uh, I, I believe we will. I mean, it's more than a million people in the country, so we, it, should, it should work. It, keep it to a dollar. But, but anyway, thank you all, and I really appreciate you guys having me here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frank, and uh, you know, it's always exciting to see the support that an organization that is as grassroots an organization as you will likely ever encounter, starting in a little one-room office across the street inside the historic Lincoln Building with a dream, fueled by a dream, that only at that time a very precious few shared really belief in that dream. Frank, you were one of those as they took turns paying the monthly rent to keep that little office open. And as I like to say, it also kept our hopes and dreams alive that one day we would have an opportunity to build a facility that would pay rightful tribute to one of the greatest chapters, not in baseball history, but in American history. And folks, that is that rich, compelling, inspirational story of the Negro Leagues. And Buck O'Neill never wanted them to be forgotten. That was the motivation for building this. Now it is incumbent upon his museum to make sure that we take this powerful story and continue to make it relevant for future generations to also embrace what this is all about. And to do that, we need to grow. And the Buck O'Neill Education is one of those education research centers is just one aspect of growth that is on the horizon for this museum. I want to tell y'all so bad about the next phase, but I can't, I'm sworn to secrecy. And, and you know I can't keep a secret. But I, I, I <laughs> and, and Frank mentioned how, Buck, how much Buck loved Kansas City. And Kansas City loved him back. And, and Mayor, you've heard me say this before. When he came to Kansas City to join the Kansas City Monarchs in 1938, he said, I knew that I was coming to the heart of America. I never knew I was coming to the center of the universe. 18th and Vine, y'all, was indeed the center of the universe. It is going to be the center of the universe once again. Because as my friend, Mr. Ollie Gates says, and he says it so passionately, there's not another street in the country that is as recognized for its history as 18th and Vine. And so 18th and Vine should be alive. It should be vibrant. And this museum has led the way for now 30 plus years. And we're preparing to lead the way for the next 30 plus years. But the man who is the heartbeat of this city, the leader of our great city, 
He uh, is also no stranger to this museum. And every time I bring him in here, I always got good news to share. That ain't always the case for a lot of things, Mayor, that you have to show up with at. But when we do it at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, we like to give you some good news that you can celebrate. So come on up and celebrate. Please welcome the Honorable Quentin Lucas, Mayor of the great city of Kansas City. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> Well, good morning, good morning. I will not run too long, although I always get envious of some of these introductions because it is always eight gold gloves, Frank White. And then it's like junior varsity high school basketball star, Quint Lucas. But that's all right. You know you're laying in the world and it works out all right. A few other things I want to note as I get started. By the way, I, I lived close to this museum for about 12 and a half years. And in case you were wondering, as Kathy referenced Bob's attire, this is what Bob looks like on Saturday morning, on Thursday evening. Oh, well, you know, when you're just trying to run to the store, you got your shorts on, that old T-shirt, Bob looking dressed to the nines. So it's always a thing. One other thing that I want to do, which is, is rare when I start remarks, I want to encourage everybody to pull out your cell phone. I know particularly some of you young folks are getting nervous. You can check your messages, do whatever else. But after that, of course, go to thanksamillionbuck.com and put your dollar in. And if you have children who aren't contributing, pay for them. And if you got a mama who's not contributing, pay for them. And if there's anybody you remember, just make sure you're getting all of your dollars in. Because I'm with Mr. White. I think we can get well over not just, let's say, two and a half million for this metro area. Uh, what, 330, 340 million for the country. And we're going to give Bob a whole bunch of money to work with. I can't wait to see what we'll be doing then. A few other things I want to note and a few other people I want to acknowledge. One of my colleagues from the Kansas City Council is in this room, Councilman Lee Barnes. Please stand up, be recognized, Lee. And part of why I think of Councilman Barnes, uh, Lee lost his father a few years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, and his father had lived well into his 90s. And during the funeral, they mentioned the fact that Lee's father had talked about that had his life been a little different, he would have been playing in the Negro Leagues. And when you think about the history that so many in our community got to cherish and celebrate and the history that's being preserved by this museum, it makes you step back and just smile. You know, as Mr. Kendrick noted, often as a mayor, they for some reason ask me tough questions about any number of intractable public and social issues. What I don't always get to do is talk about the joy of this community and the people that are working to preserve it each day. But Mr. O'Neill is one of them. I was a young man when I got a chance to bump into Buck O'Neill, and I don't even think I knew the full magnitude of who I was bumping into. But as I was coming up, and with respect to all of our professional teams, having some lean times in the late 90s and in the mid-2000s, and seeing Buck O'Neill as a franchise in and of himself, sharing this story of Kansas City and of the greatness of our community, our city, the black community, and so much more. A man who defined black excellence before we had social media and any number of other things. And a man who today is still helping us share the legacy of Kansas City of baseball, of the great people who walked around 18th and Vine in our community some years ago. So I encourage all of you to continue to share the message far and wide. You know, when I go to other cities, it is wonderful to hear them talk about a few different things. And one of the first things they always mention is the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. They mention Buck O'Neill. They mention the outstanding history we have in Kansas City. So what an outstanding gift he left us. And if all we have to do is dig a little deeper, find a few dollars, make sure we tell the story, let's make sure we keep telling those positive stories each and every single day. And I, I'll just leave you with this. And, and the speakers who have already gone have said this in some ways, right? Making sure you share the story, talking about the history. Each day in our country, and I'll admit that sometimes I'm a part of it, if you follow me on Twitter and such things, we do a lot of division. We talk a lot about differences that we have. We don't talk about the people who built our communities and we can bring them together. Bob has mentioned a few times getting Republicans and Democrats to work together on this bill for the coin. And by the way, you may think it's simple. It is not, right? Sometimes they can't agree how to fill a pothole. In fact, usually we can't. 
But having the opportunity to get people to work together, to sit back and to say how our community is great and how our community can be better, that's the story this museum shares each and every day. You don't have to know baseball, you don't have to know Kansas City, you don't have to know history. But when you leave this museum, you know a story about cooperation, about community building, and about hope. That's what we're doing with the Thanks a Million Buck campaign, and that's what happens inside these walls each and every day. Thank you for your support of Kansas City and this museum, and more than anything, thank you, Buck. God bless you. Thank you, Mayor Lucas. And he is absolutely right. When we built this museum, and the thing that Buck oftentimes said is that so oftentimes in our society, we celebrate the people who cross over the bridge. But here at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, we celebrate the people who built the bridge. They enable Jackie Robinson and other black and brown players to move into the major leagues and not only change our game, but change our country. That also reminds me that in 2024, the ultimate bridge builder will have his own brand new bridge, the Buck O'Neill Bridge, formerly the old Broadway Bridge. And of course, the current Broadway Bridge is named for Buck. I had an opportunity to participate in the girder signing. I, I'll be honest, I didn't even know what a girder was, but I went over and signed it anyway. And, and it was pretty special to know that someone who built bridges in this community, really across this country, he was the ultimate bridge builder. He bridged black and white, young and old, men and women, unlike anyone that I ever saw in my life. And I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know because I was a witness to it. I saw it and, and was moved and touched by it. And so many others were touched by that spirit as well. And now they still have an opportunity to be touched by that spirit. We have embarked, God, I'm trying to, I've been trying to think about when we actually launched the campaign and Phil Sykes from Sykes Style, this wonderful piece of art. It has been touring every high V store in the metro area to be auctioned off. And I'm gonna let Phil come up and basically tell you what inspired him as he was tasked with commissioning this, uh, being commissioned to create this piece that captures the essence and spirit of one John Jordan Buck O'Neill. So please welcome Kansas City artist, Phil Sight Style Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Hello, everyone. It's truly an honor to be here as a representative of the arts community, a baseball fan, and a Kansas City resident. I want to commend the Negro Leagues and also High V for choosing artwork to help honor Mr. O'Neill's legacy and bring awareness to the museum and raise money for the museum, which is really important. Um, you might know me from some of the murals around town, the one on the Urban Youth Academy here, some other the Chiefs ones, I paint things for champions. And a project like this for a champion of baseball and culture, it's truly an honor. Artwork is about storytelling, and Buck O'Neill was the ultimate storyteller. And I hear those stories through Mr. Kendrick wherever he goes, and people stop him, and he has a story for every occasion, and it's, it's a beautiful way to pass on the cultural tradition about this. Um, some facts about the painting is I wanted to make sure that it was colorful, it was bright, it connected with your eyes, and so he's got an extra white printed on his eyes so you could see that. Um, showing him as not just a man who was able to communicate and articulate and tell everybody you know, about the good times and everything. I wanted to show him as a player because he was an all-star. He was a coach. He broke barriers. And so showing him in two different ways is very important for this piece. Um, I really do commend everybody for being here and being a part of this, the idea that arts and business and baseball come together to celebrate you know, a life and legacy is really, really important. Um, I want to thank my team. Holly Hayden and Arian Gimitas for working on this project with me. And the idea that we'll be able to put together not just this painting, but all the merchandise you see over here in the photo, 
booth back there. It's really important to get a bunch of different things at price points. So if you get your pin, make sure to rock it on your lapel. It's an empty. It's got a 22 on it. So it's the Monarch's hat with the 22. This is one of my favorite pieces, and it's just showing um, what awesome design can do to honor a place like this and a person like Mr. O'Neill. So I'm really excited to see um, who has won the auction of the piece, and I think they will be getting a picture with it today. And so um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I think we've definitely hit it out the park with this project, and I'm excited to be here and be a part of it, everything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Phil. We really appreciate your amazing talent and the inspiration behind this particular effort. And we certainly thank our friends over at hy V for utilizing their stores and their belief in community to celebrate a legend, Buck O'Neill. And this has been an amazing partnership that we've fostered with hy V now over two decades. Relationships don't typically last <laughs> that long. And this has been one that we have been so tremendously proud of. And there are a number of hy V store directors here today, and I'm sure Rob will certainly acknowledge them. And it takes all of them who have come together so willingly to say that they believe in the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. And I go back again to last March, and we've done some amazing things, as you can see all the stuff that's going on on the Paseo because tomorrow is, of course, the Heart of America Hot Dog Festival that we created in 2013 with our partner, hy V. And for those of you who love hot dogs, we just, a couple of weeks ago, introduced the Chicago American Giant. That's the signature hot dog at this year's festival. It is our take on a Chicago-style hot dog in honor of Andrew Rube Foster, who owned the Chicago American Giants. And it's a jumbo beef hot dog stuffed inside a poppy seed bun. It's got some mustard. You know, you can't put ketchup on a Chicago dog. Mustard, relish, chopped onions, sliced tomatoes, and I think uh, chili peppers, and a dash of celery salt. And, and that is going to be the featured hot dog. Some people stumble into that event when we were hosting that a few weeks ago, Shelby, and they were surprised that they got a chance to be the first ones to sample the Chicago American Giants. And let me tell you, it passed the taste test in flying colors. And, and so, but that's just one of the many efforts that we've embarked on with hy V. The most important one, I think, took place last March when we turned the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum into a COVID vaccination clinic. And we vaccinated here at this museum over 2,000 people. Those who otherwise would not have gotten access to that, that vaccine. Those who might have been afraid to go into a clinical environment because of the history that has so oftentimes been associated with African Americans and the medical profession. For them to be able to come into a culturally enriched confine and the fact that the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum is seen as a community leader, I think it added an additional level of trust. And we were able to administer that life-saving vaccine to a lot of people in this community. And I do, I think it was one of the most important community outreaches that we've ever made. Now, we have a lot of fun, and we're going to have a lot of fun this weekend. And every time hy V comes to see me, they seem to always come with a check. And, 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 and everybody knows whenever there's a check involved, I'm happy. Yeah, I am happy, but in all sincerity, I do want to bring Rob Budd up to the podium. Rob is the, I want to make sure I get his title right, Regional Vice President of Operations for the Kansas City area. Rob, it's great to see you, man, and thank you for being here. Please welcome him. Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you for inviting uh, us to join you today. Um, it was exactly four months ago to the day, actually, uh, that we gathered together um, at our Prairie Village store uh, to announce the Buck O'Neill Tip of the Cap uh, art tour that paid special tribute to Buck O'Neill 
and uh, help to further our ongoing efforts to support this great museum. Just to give you a little background, uh, hy and the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum have enjoyed uh, a rich and long-lasting relationship that began over 20 years ago, back in 1999, when our current CEO, Randy Edeker, uh, had an extraordinary opportunity to meet Buck O'Neill for the first time. And he still talks about that uh, to this day and, and that relationship um, that, that he had with Buck. We've heard a lot of the stories um, about Buck, seen a lot of the great videos, and, and know the impact that he had in our community. Since then, uh, hy has been an all-in partner uh, with the museum and got on board last December uh, with an all-out effort to get Buck inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. When that became a reality, uh, we wanted to celebrate in, in a big way. And so along with uh, the museum, we commissioned Phil, uh, Sykes Style Schaefer, to create a one-of-a-kind art piece that epitomizes the essence of Buck O'Neill. This unique art piece was auctioned off. The winning bid uh, was from Christopher Graham of Minneapolis, who flew to Kansas City specifically with, uh, to be with us today. Uh, thank you, Christopher, for supporting the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and hy V as we honored a true baseball and community legend. Along with this art piece, Phil designed t-shirts, posters, bags, and pins, which he talked about before, uh, that we sold in our Kansas City area stores. We also partnered with Chateau Milk for a limited edition commemorative salted flavor caramel milk, which we still have available in our stores. And we held a registered donation earlier this month. And coming up here, uh, as soon as they arrive, we'll be uh, set to release a limited edition Buck O'Neill uh, bobblehead with all proceeds going to the museum. I'll have our uh, store directors come on up now. As Bob mentioned, uh, our, our store directors here in the Kansas City metro area are all present to be able to uh, present this check for our efforts this uh, past four months. Well, yeah, this will be kind of a busy picture here. <laughs> so on behalf of hy V and the Kansas City area hy V stores, it's with great pleasure uh, that we present the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum with this check for $10,000. <laughs> High V store directors, uh, Randy, who has, as Rob mentioned, been such an integral part of this relationship when he was struck by Buck O'Neill and that amazing spirit that he exuded. And uh, that spirit is still so very much alive. And on behalf of all of us at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, our entire team, they're out there hustling right now, getting ready for this festival tomorrow. But Kiana Sings, uh, Joan Finley, Ray Doswell, N Nadita Mose, Kathy Moss, all of our young part-timers in our gift shop, we all are so tremendously, Dr. Ray Doswell, we're all so tremendously grateful for the relationship and all of the generosity that has been bestowed upon this museum, which allows us to do the things that we need to be able to continue to do, and that is to impact the lives of young people in a positive fashion around a piece of history that absolutely deserves to play on. And so, again, I want to remind everyone that the new Buck O'Neill Thanks a Million logo here is unveiled today. That was done with uh, support from our friends uh, over at Guild Communications, and I want to thank them. You'll see that image on a lot of museum gear as well. It is also featured on the new Thanks a Million Buck landing page. And so as you can see,
this museum continues to be touched by so many people in so many ways and quite frankly that is what is going to take in order for us to continue to be successful and continue to grow. Uh, I certainly want to, I, we, you know, I, don't, I, know, I know we got dignitaries who've got tight schedules, but certainly want to answer as many questions as you guys may have. There may be some opportunities for one-on-ones as well. I know I can certainly make myself available for one-on-ones. I know the mayor and Frank have a lot of stuff to do as they're running a county and a city, but they may be gracious enough to answer a question or two too. So if anyone has a question, please uh, fire away. And like I said, there may be an opportunity to do some one-on-ones. But any questions in general from members of the media? Well, if there are no questions, the next thing to do, as Mayor said, pull your cell phones out, go to your laptops or your, your PCs, log on to thanks a million buck, and because we don't want Kansas City to be outshined by the rest of the nation, so we're issuing that challenge specifically here at home for those at home to support this effort as those around the country will likely do so as well and help us reach this goal of raising at least a million bucks in honor of Buck O'Neill and of course the building of the Buck O'Neill Education and Research Center. Thank you all from the bottom of all of our hearts for being here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I... Good, good afternoon. I just wanted to bring some greetings here and thanks for your support on behalf of the 14 um, uh, members of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum Board of Directors, as well as our past chairperson, uh, Randall Ferguson, as well as our advisory board. Uh, certainly, as Bob mentioned and everyone's mentioned, there's plenty of stories here. There's over a million stories here to be told in this museum. But one of the stories that I think we would be remiss to not tell and to talk about is that if Mr. Buck, and I know Bob just talked about if there was a way we could talk to someone heaven, in heaven, if Mr. Buck could facsimile himself, uh, I think it would be an opportunity that we would see someone in the effects of Bob Kendrick. Bob Kendrick certainly e evolves and exudes all of the things, all the virtues that Buck has shown us over the years here. And while we're thanking Buck, Buck a million times here, I just wanted to take the opportunity while we have folks here to make sure we thank our unicorn, our five-tool player, if you will, our five-tool guy, Mr. Bob Kendrick, a bunch. Thank him a bunch for all that he's done to get this done. So. so thank you one and all, and we, we appreciate all your support. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Thank you all so much for the support. Hopefully, I'll see a bunch of you all here tomorrow for the Heart of America Hot Dog Festival starring Average White Band, Silk, Kendrick, The Family Soul, Atlantic Star, Julian Vaughn, all live in concert, and of course, some great hot dogs to boot. We'll see you on Saturday, and if not, we'll see you soon. Thank you all again. <laughs>